Meghan Markle has scored a major legal victory. The Duchess of Sussex won her bid to dismiss half-sister Samantha Markle's defamation lawsuit against her on Thursday, Access Hollywood has learned. A Florida judge granted Meghan's request to throw out the case, citing in court documents obtained by NBC News that the mom of two cannot be held liable for claims made in the unauthorized biography Finding Freedom or what she said in her and Prince Harry's 2021 Oprah Winfrey interview. Per the docs, U.S. District Attorney Judge Charlene Edwards Honeywell determined that Meghan's statement to Oprah that she, quote, grew up as an only child is protected opinion and that she also isn't legally responsible for content in a book she did not publish herself. Samantha filed her lawsuit in 2022 and asked for $75,000 in damages, according to the BBC, reportedly alleging that Meghan had exposed her to, quote, humiliation, shame and hatred on a worldwide scale and misrepresented their relationship. The latest development comes months after Prince Harry's own explosive memoir, Spare, which contained multiple personal revelations and took digs at the royal family. Access Hollywood previously spoke with DailyMail.com's Charlie Langston, who broke down some of the book's biggest bombshells. The way that Prince Harry frames the story of losing his virginity is recalling an encounter with one of his royal bodyguards who paid him a visit at Eton and said that he had been sent there to find out the truth. Harry immediately thought, oh, he's here because he's found out that I lost my virginity. He then proceeds to recount what he says was the humiliating experience of his first time having sex. He says that his encounter took place in a field behind a very busy pub that the woman in question was older, although he doesn't name her. He says that she treated him like a young stallion, that he mounted her, and that after it was over, she gave him a slap on the behind, and off he went on his merry way. Now, he says that it was humiliating. He says that it was incredibly foolish because it took place in such a public area, and he was convinced that someone must have seen it happening. As it turns out, the bodyguard in question had been sent to Harry's school to ask whether Harry had been doing drugs, but Harry took that opportunity in the book to share a very intimate moment with what will no doubt be millions of readers across the world. I can't believe he's sharing all of this. I think the truth of the matter is, this book is really, as far as Harry is concerned, this book is the first opportunity that he has had to share his story. Now, we've seen Harry and Meghan doing multiple joint projects, the Oprah interview, the Netflix series, the Future Invictus Games documentary, but at no point has Harry really been given the opportunity to tell his side or his recollection of events from his childhood until now. And I think in some ways, this experience of writing the book will have been something of a floodgate moment for Harry, where once he started, he just couldn't stop. And you have to keep in mind, he also received multi-millions of dollars for writing this book. And the publishers were not going to accept a retelling of the story that he's told multiple times. This book needed to have personal details in it that could not be found anywhere else. And the story of Harry losing his virginity is exactly the kind of moments that the publishers will have wanted from him. And he delivered. Um, let's talk about the new details on the feud between Meghan and Kate. Harry says Kate had baby brain. Can you explain the context of that, what happened, and why Meghan allegedly said that? The argument that took place between Meghan and Kate in the lead up to the Sussexes wedding in May 2018 is something that by this point, the majority of people know about. It's become a she said, she said situation. It was first reported that Meghan had made Kate cry Meghan then said during her Oprah interview that no, it was actually the other way around, that Kate had in fact made her cry. After that, it was reported again that no, it was in fact Meghan who made Kate cry over an argument about bridesmaids' dresses. Whether or not we will ever find out the truth remains to be seen. However, Harry does admit 
that Megan made a comment about Kate having baby brain because of her hormones. Again, in the lead up to their wedding. Understandably, this comment really upset Kate and Megan was actually reprimanded by someone inside the palace who told her that she was not close enough to Kate to be joking about her hormones. Megan found that encounter upsetting for her part. I think the reality about this whole controversy is that the two women were never bosom buddies. They were never best friends. And to hear it from sources who are close to Kate, she did all that she could to welcome Meghan into the royal family and to really show her the ropes, to kind of indicate to her best practices, as it were, the best practices of being a new member of the royal family. As far as Meghan is concerned, Kate did not give her enough support and didn't really treat her like a sister-in-law. She was more like a kind of, you know, person who was making sure that Meghan was following the rules. So I think the truth of the matter is the two women were never really on the same side, nor were they really on the same page. And this anecdote just indicates that once again. Harry basically says, Meghan made what she thought was a joke. Kate didn't take it to be a joke. And Megan was the one who was reprimanded.